Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video we are going to go over some consignments here in the beginning, and then after I go through these consignments, at the end of the video, I'm actually going to show you guys some stuff that I watch on YouTube, some other Pokemon YouTubers. So we're going to start off here with a lot of these Aerodactyl V. This is the, from the Japanese set, Lost Abyss, and they all got 10s. I mean, you can see they're almost sequential, so you probably had a few in here that were not 10s. I didn't get consigned those, just these. These all have... CS13 in the title. So if you're looking specifically for these items, either they're already listed now or they will be very soon. Most of the stuff is going to end on a Sunday. Got Blaine's Charizard, got a base set Charizard, got a VMAX Climax one, Dark Scissor. Some really decent cards there. This is one of the banned artworks because you can see his eyeballs right there. They're actually pointed up. And so they didn't think that was appropriate. So on the English side, his eyeballs are in the center. Uh, well, the pupils in the center of his eyeball looking straight forward this one right here you got the silhouette of misty and she's naked so we did not get this misty's tears we got the one where um, it's definitely not showing this it's it's more of the, like the face you got this sabrina's gaze <clears throat> it looks like she's given the finger so another banned artwork this sabrina's jinx was also banned because the skin is black I guess they associated that with a mime i'm not really too sure what's going on there but on the english side it's purple skin we have the McDonald's Umbreon, and then we're on to another consignment. See what else we have here. I don't think any of them have a ton of cards. These are all CS15. Yeah, there's one right there too. Got a Blaine's Charmander. Got a Charizard from the Neo 2 file. Got a Classic Collection one, first edition base set. Got some tins right there. One of the cooler tops artworks. Was that cool? I can't even remember. Cool couple Carl and Nia. I think that's what it is. Got the uh, alternate art Mewtwo. Then we have the Gold Star re reprint of the Umbreon Gold Star in the Classic Collection. Next up, I think all these have CS11 in the title. We have a Caitlyn Full Art. We've got a Championship Festival staff stamped. It's Mint 9. Friends and Galar. Got a Lugia V alternate art. Got the Gold. Got the VMAX Rayquaza. And then we also have a Serena in a 10. But wait, there is more. Let's see what else we have here. A lot of decent consignments coming through. I'm getting more people wanting to consign like massive stuff and me throw them deals for cards under 100 bucks. But in general, I don't like to, I don't deviate below that $20 minimum for consignment. So if you do want me to sell your cards, I have no problem doing that. But it's a 20% rate with a 20% or $20 minimum. If the individual item goes over $5,000, then uh, which you can group them together for that, for that reason. Um, you can have the rate drop to 10%. If you guys remember those Poncho Pikachus for the Mega Charizard, that actually went for 5400 those uh, two cards. These are all CS1, by the way. So that one had a rate of 10%, so the fee on that one's like 540 bucks versus you know 1080 at the, the 20%. But I don't, I don't really do much in between. Got the uh, Gyarados. On the English side, we actually had a um, the Reverse Hollow and the Regular, which it's, it's been a while. I think this is one of the first sets that it, you'd seen that on a secret rare. Before that, it was probably the crystals, if I'm remembering correctly, where you had the secret rares you could get in both regular hollow and reverse hollow. And I just drew that off the top of my head, so I, I could be wrong on that one. Feel free to to correct me if that is the case. If you do sell in lots, I do charge an additional five dollars per card. So, like, if you wanted to group these four cards together, which I don't recommend. You know, you'd have that 20%, $20 minimum still. However, that'd be five, 10, 15 extra dollars, like a straight fee for putting it in a lot. I usually discourage against that because you're gonna get the most bang for your buck by selling the card individually. And if you're just trying to do that because the cards are cheap, then it's because of you know the price point. I have plenty of cards that are under 100 bucks that I don't give attention to on through my own sales channel because I try to focus on these consignments. So try to keep the value over 100 bucks and you're gonna get the, the best out of the sale itself. And then there's a Zapdos. This is pretty cool. I think this is only Watsu PSA 10 Hollow that we have. This is uh, CS21. So that's it for the consignments. Let me jump over to my desktop. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you guys some of the PokeTubers that I watch. Not all of these are going to be focused on Pokemon specifically, but I am going to show you the content that I ingest a lot of here on YouTube and talk about them briefly so looking down here i think these are listed in the most 
like whatever I give the most time towards the challenge. You can see Pokey Knowledge is up there at number one. We'll get to him. I'm going to start down here. I'm going to actually start with Jim Mint Pokemon. I've been subscribed to him for a while, but he does not put out that much content. He's put out some more recently. I wish he put out more. I think this is a top for so many people. And they wish he put out a lot, but he's a busy guy. Next, we have Pokemon Classics. Really well done editing. Um, he'd probably be higher it, again if he put out more content. You can see about once a week or so. And so usually I watch the videos that he puts out. Looks like I'm behind on these two. The PSA returns, that kind of stuff doesn't interest me as much. The consignment videos, like the ones that I do, like I just did, uh, those don't interest me that much opening up. So if these channels post any of those things, it probably pushes them down on my list just because I don't watch that specific content. Like SM Pratt, he'd probably be up near the top uh, if he put out more content and if he didn't put out the content where he had like consignments and stuff. You can see right here, I didn't even watch this one with the uh, PSA 10 Warm Pikachu, the SM Pratt Showcase, because I don't really like looking at the cards. Most of the stuff that I watch on YouTube is really information. And if I have to stop and watch it a lot of times, then I don't watch it all the way through because I want to see, the, I might want to see the screen, but. I can't because I'm doing something else and I'm trying to listen to content and ingest that type of thing. You can see right there, I saw this one. That was probably an easy one for me to listen to. This one I might be able to listen to. It's probably going to be a short. Yeah, it's only 53 seconds. The opening one, I didn't watch that because you know, I, I don't watch the opening videos in general. All right, next up we have Cardboard Ape. This is a new and upcoming YouTuber. At least I think, at least for Pokemon, he might be in somewhere else because he's doing a really good job with his videos. Very high quality. He's got 2,600 subscribers. But when I subscribed like a week ago, he had like 1,800. So he's already gained more subscribers in that week than I did in the past like month and a half. And you can see right here, he just posted a video ago about 2,000 views. That's typically what I'm going to get on a, on a regular video anyways. But he's got some here, 10,000, 10,000, 50,000. So, I mean, he's getting a lot of views. I think a lot of his stuff is very applicable to people. So, uh, let's keep an eye on him. I think Cardboard Ape has a has a lot of opportunity to be one of the big YouTubers in, in a very short time. All right, next up we have Top 10 Pokemon. This guy would be in the top three most likely if he didn't post stuff that I had to watch. So a lot of the things that he posts about top 10 expensive V-Star Universe Pokemon card openings, auctions of the week, openings. A lot of times when I put his videos on, I have a tendency to stop whatever it is I'm doing, click on my computer and check out what it, what it is he's doing. So that's a good thing. I think that's what people you know want from a YouTube video. They actually want to see what's going on. Um, but for me, a lot of times I'm working, I'm trying to do little labels, package people's shipments. And so I need information that I can listen to, but not have to be as engaged with. All right. Next up we have Cardinal Gaming. So Cardinal Gaming, he's an actual, he's actually got a car shop. I believe he has two locations now. He gives a lot of good insight on to different games. I watch almost everything he puts out. The stuff that I don't watch might be on non Pokemon stuff, but like when he touched on the 30th anniversary from Magic, I listened to that. Uh, this one right here, V-Star Universe, is too expensive. He started going into the actual cards in the set, so I turned that one off. I didn't want to have a spoiler, and I haven't seen this one that he just posted. But uh, I like the way he talks. He He's a real guy. He's growing a real beard now. I know some people don't like it, but uh, congrats on the beard. I hope that you can keep it going. All right, next up, Fanny, Danny Phantom. I about said Fanny Danton. Danny Phantom. He puts out a lot of information, man. And he is a fast talker. A lot of times when I see his videos, I'm like, nah, I don't want to watch this. But then as soon as I start, I end up watching the whole way through. And there's a lot of videos I'm behind on him. There's a lot of content that's been pushed out right now. And I've just been busy with my family. Whew, crazy busy. Man, just thinking about today and what I got to do tomorrow and the next day. Man. I am ready for a vacation, but at the same time, you know, I want to embrace all of it. But anyways, Danny Phantom, really good information that he puts out. If you guys want to keep up to date with a lot of the modern chase cards, the prices, the um, the deck staples for meta, that kind of stuff, then this is a good channel for you. I, I think that he had a, a goal of 100,000 subscribers this year. He almost got there. I hope that he still can. I mean, he's got another 10, 11 days, which would be a very tall order, but... 
great channel. I know he's going to get to 100K soon, and when he does, he's got a really cool giveaway going on. Next up, we have Pokenomics. So this is Jake. Jake puts out a lot of information as well. His content is usually more talking and long form, the kind of stuff that I like listening to. I'm that guy, when I see a four-hour podcast or whatever, I'm probably going to listen. Now, he does get into other games, like you can see these first two right here. This is actually niche TCGs he collects, and he goes into Star Wars and some other stuff. I'm not going to watch those. I don't really have any interest in anything other than Pokemon, possibly Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic. Pokemon is going to be my main jam. So those are videos that I'm going to personally skip, but it's very cool to see that kind of stuff and to hear. Because I did, you can see I listened to some of this one. And it's good to have an awareness that you have these other TCGs that are out there. And he's kind of shows you, he shows you a little bit of insight into the plays that are going on with those. All right, next up we have Rattle Pokemon. This is probably... Uh, the one that I watched the least percentage of the amount of content that get put out because he puts out a lot of content. So if you look at it, he's got one, two, three, four, five within the last day. Um, when all is said and done, I'll probably have watched this one about the scamming. And then I'll watch this one about the story behind the Pikachu on the ball. I'm not going to watch these ones where he's opening up cards with himself or, you know, on the toilet or somewhere else. Now be advised that if you come to this channel and you watch some stuff, especially if he's talking about dirtbags and scammers and that kind of stuff. He will use some vulgar language. He is not afraid to insult somebody. And so if you're watching with kids, just be aware that, um, yeah, he could he could definitely get into some, some words that you may not want to have your children hearing. But he puts out a lot of good information here, and he puts a lot of people on the spot for the things that they're doing. So it, it's starting to become this little thing in the community where if you do – Become like a scammer or do something wrong, be like, yeah, you're going to end up in an episode on Rattle. And he even does these things with little booze news uh, on Friday premieres where he kind of makes fun of almost everybody in the hobby. So it's a fun channel. Uh, at the same time, he does hold people accountable. He does pack openings. He puts out a lot of content. Puts out a lot of content. All right, next up we have Z and G. Typically, uh, uh, I think it's going to change up a little bit, but most all their videos are lives where they're sitting there talking, showing their consignments. But they're, uh, I believe they're finally done with the Graded Gem stuff so that they're going to have more time to get into other types of videos. I watched just about every one of them. You can see all of these lives. Looks like I, I didn't watch the Thanksgiving one. I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. But you can see I've watched almost every video that they've stuck out. And, you know, they're all going to be an hour or so, maybe longer. And I'm just playing them in the background, listening to what they're saying. Cam cusses a little bit. I'm talking to you, Cam. <laughs> but they're all they're all good guys here. And like Z and G, I trust him. Or I trust James. I trust Z and G. The, uh, the business now, I guess, is James and Cam and Lauren, too. I trust them with consignments. So if you ever did not want to consign with me and you wanted a lower rate, they consign at a cheaper rate than I do. So go check them out. They do good um, on their eBay sales and that kind of stuff. They're going to they're going to get you some advertising. They're hoping to get this up to 20k. Can we get them there? We got them up to 19.7 before, I believe, or maybe it was 19.6, but they didn't come back down a little bit. But now they're putting out some pretty good videos. Uh, we got a scammed one right here. Maybe go give that one a view. Help uh, get them a little bit of revenue advertising back for all the packs that he opened up. He opens up a lot of really cool packs there. All right, next up we have Alpha Investments. This one is typically not Pokemon. He does talk about Pokemon stuff. Most of the, the videos are about Magic the Gathering. Honestly, I don't know why I listen to so much of Rudy, but I do. Again, he uh, he cusses quite a bit. He can get vulgar, but at, at times he's easy to listen to. He's very smooth in the way he talks, and he's very knowledgeable about a lot of things. Now, I think his net is a little bit wider than, like he stretches it out a little bit farther than we might want to let on he needs to like the meta zoo when he was talking about being the seance being 110 dollars the boxes are actually 90 sitting on ebay so he can say i think he can get a little overstretched in how much information he puts out because he puts out a lot of content you can see 18 hours ago one day two day three day three day i mean typically you're going to see about 50 videos a month from this guy and he's always talking about things that are going on in the market whether it be magic could be Pokemon. Could I, he, I've never heard him talk much about Yu-Gi-Oh, but I do hear him talking about other smaller niche games as well, Flesh and Blood, the the Meta Zoos, the Weiss Schwartz, and that kind of stuff. But for me, anytime he puts up a Pokemon video, I watch it, and then I listen in on some of the other stuff where he rants real hard about the market. 
All right, next up we have Pokey Flips. I'll be honest with you, I thought Pokey Flips was going to be a little bit lower in this list because they don't put out that much content. Uh, you can see right here, one month ago, two months ago, two months ago, and I haven't watched through them all the way, which is so it's surprising me that it was up here as tall as it was, but it might be because I started watching the videos recently, and then I didn't get a chance to finish it. Let's see, they do have lives. You can see I kind of started all of them, watched this one almost all the way through, that one all the way through, and then you can see these. I didn't get through too much of it, but, you know, three hours, so, I mean, I probably got 20 minutes into that thing, probably got you know, 40 minutes into that one. So I've got plenty of backlog stuff that I can go back and watch. A lot of times with these lives, though, it's not as fun to watch it a month later because some of the stuff isn't as relevant. And, you know, when they're three hours long and I've got five other people that I need to listen to, sometimes I do miss them. All right, next up, number two on the list is Catch em All Collectibles. Dan's a great guy. He puts out a lot of good information. And I just started watching i believe i yeah i got about halfway through this when i was watching it when i was like hey i've got a free minute upstairs to go talk up well i've got a free minute now to go upstairs and to talk into a camera and not be interrupted for a little bit even though it's lunchtime and i'm pretty hungry i'm not going to watch your metazoo stuff but i will watch most of the other pokemon you can see right there nothing on the metazoo nothing on the metazoo and then you can kind of see i'm going through all the videos that are not you know Basically, every video that is Pokemon, the videos that I'm, I didn't watch are ones that are not Pokemon. So that's MetaZoo, that's MetaZoo, that's DBZ score, there's MetaZoo, MetaZoo, and everything else. I pretty much watched, you know, what whatever he puts out. He's very good with, with money and with, you know, different types of investment and giving good advice. Although it's not financial advice, as he would say. All right, last, we have Pokey uh, Knowledge Cards. Again, he cusses a little bit here and there. But for the most part, he's just a chill dude. And he throws up a live randomly you can see 13 hours ago two days ago six days so i didn't watch this one i think because i was watching that one that day i got through about an hour of it but most of his videos i do watch uh, i just finished up the price sensi sensitivity one that was the one that i was watching this morning as i was working so you can see i've watched it through a lot of the videos like that one right there almost five hours i watched through all that one <laughs> that I can't believe I had that thing on for that long. But I've got all these different videos. Or he has a bunch of different videos where he goes back and he highlights different parts in some of his premieres that happen once a month. I've been in several of them. You can see I'm right there in the top. Well, I've been in one video, but I've been in several of these little highlights that he's had. And then I had one video where he did like an interview with me. But So these are cool little snippets. So you don't have to go through the five hours if you're not crazy like me and want to watch all of that. And uh, he can he'll highlight different things from those those videos. They don't get a ton of views, but honestly, he does a really good job highlighting different things. So, Pokey Knowledge Cards, you are number one on my list right now. You've been number one for a while. Usually, when I come over here and I see you got a dot, I'll go ahead and put it on the background. It's really easy for me to listen to to John talking while I'm working. And um, yeah, that these are the Pokey Tubers that I watch. So, uh, if you didn't make the list, I'm sorry. It might just be that I haven't watched your stuff in a little bit. Like. Ruxin, you got Eva's Binder, Basic Trainer, Pokey Rev, Pokemon DNA. You got a lot of these people on here that uh, I'm subscribed to, but I might not watch a lot of Ruxin stuff because he does a lot of openings. He's more Yu Gi Oh! Same thing with Pokey Rev. Like, he just opens a lot of stuff, so I don't watch much of it. Old School Pokemon, he used to be uh, higher up, but I don't think he puts out, yeah, he doesn't put out that much material. And. Like when he's bought, when you buy stuff, I don't really care. I don't I don't care about the buying, the opening, that kind of things, or that kind of stuff. The packing slips, I should have watched that one. I don't know if you do packing slips or not, but I definitely do not do packing slips. So if you do that, man, that's a waste of time. I don't know why you would do packing slips. People already get mad about it anyways. I'm trying to see who else we have in here. You got cool trainer Ryan. You can see all all of them are on the left side. Most of these are gonna be pack breakers or something like that, and I don't watch a ton of that information. Well, I don't watch a ton of that material. I'm more into the information type stuff, which is what we have here on the left. All right, guys, I'm done rambling and hope you enjoy the video.